Um, hello, this is lesson number uh, 60. It's um, called fault slash blame. Um, and I even made a little, a person to blame, someone to blame, make people happy, hearts go aflame, scapegoat to butcher, root cause unseen, ignoring the problem, someone to blame, solution unfounded, someone to blame. Um, th this is a human trait. Humans for as long as history has been recorded, have always wanted a human sacrifice. There are many situations that happen, and it can be in a corporation, it can be in an organization, it can be in the government, it can be anywhere, and they want a human sacrifice. They want someone to blame. The peasants with their pitchforks and torches going to the castle needed someone to blame. The French Revolution, they had to take someone's head off, someone to blame. Um, today we see, you know, whether whatever political side of the aisle we have trump or pelosi or uh, that now we have aoc someone to blame this human characteristic never um never lets us actually deal with a problem now there are times when someone is actually to blame you might look at um situation we had a but they're even a small part of it you know i remember the uh, iraq war when the um, I think it was the Kuwaiti ambassador's daughter went and testified that the Kuwaitis were, or the Iraqi soldiers were grabbing Kuwaiti babies out of incubators and killing them and bayoneting them and throwing them on the ground, the cold ground to die. And now that person caused a lot of murder, caused a lot of death, and they, they should be to blame. I don't know why there isn't a Nuremberg trial for that person, because they absolutely lied and caused a lot of damage. But even that person didn't create everything. They were just one little push in a giant thing with a lot of other people to blame. So almost never is there one tiny individual to blame. You, you've got a, the old idea, the cliche, which cliches have a lot of truth to them. Cliches are wonderful if you're smart enough to look at it because nothing becomes a cliche unless there's so much truth in it that it's been said so frequently and noticed by so many people that it's become a cliche. So we should actually examine our cliches and, and really glean the wisdom from them. So anyway, this one, someone to blame, the human sacrifice, the fault. A lot of organizations have a, have a very faulty system and they will look for someone to blame. Uh, it could be a school corporation that fires the superintendent almost cyclically or the principal where they are out of the, you know, they, they are, they're in a bad situation and they move on and they get fired and then they have, but the situation is such that no one can be successful in that. Or it could be a CEO of a company, which now we've actually almost insulated our, our executives from that because if they get fired, they just move on to the next job in, in their executive job. So they're never punished really it's almost a uh like a uh like the the bread and wine of the body of jesus because the sacrifice is just a piece of bread it's a symbolic sacrifice so we've made our human sacrifices symbolic because we fired the the ceo when when uh, ford goes bankrupt we fire them or general motors or or whatever but that person had so many, they're still multimillionaires. When our congressmen get voted out, well, they've got giant pensions and they're millionaires and they had all their their war chest for their, um, they get to keep it all. Uh, someone gets fired from a news network because they've been completely lying and, and incompetent. Well, they get a $50 million severance package. So we have made this fault blame of the individual a, it's, it's kept our organization so poorly done. One of the best examples of this is in the old days, the captain went down with the ship. If the captain messed up and the ship sunk, the captain died. In the old uh, Anglo-Saxon kings, if if something went wrong, the king died. They, you know, there, there, was, there was something where whoever was responsible did that. We don't do that anymore. So we have situations where um, the fault of the of the organization is really irrelevant and there's a lot of people with a vested interest in keeping the flawed system going 
but they want that occasional human sacrifice. It's almost a, um, I get maybe it's in our DNA also where somebody has to pay for it. I've heard a lot of there's a lot of myths in um, folklore about you know a human sacrifice, a sacrifice had to be made, and I think we still have that where we want it. And no matter how um, evolved we become, I don't want to say evolved, how more sophisticated we become, and how far we think we're removed from that old ancient pagan days of, oh, the kill, throw a woman in the volcano or sacrifice somebody for the rains to come. I don't, there's, there's a lot of our life that doesn't go past that. I've seen that happen many times. Um, and, and, and it's, uh, it's something to think about. So kind of be aware of that, the fault, the blame. And it, it from a, just from a, um, a practical standpoint, I've seen bosses come in and clean house and fire a lot of employees and then rehire, rehire people. And I've seen employees' evaluations almost always depend on who they, who hired them. I've seen a, a boss number one hire employee A, B, and they always get good evaluations and C and D get bad evaluations, even though A, B, C, and D maybe have exactly or negligible, negligible difference in their work output because they have a vested interest in, oh, I did this. So they don't want to make a sacrifice of that employee. And then a boss number two will come along and A and B who were always ranked at the top, who haven't changed a bit, now suddenly are expendable. They are, they are up for a human sacrifice. So be aware of that when you are living your life. It might help you be successful. I've seen um, a lot of situations where that's, that's the case. So notice that the fault, the blame, people love someone to blame. They want someone to blame. And it's almost like they have to pick someone to blame. And some of your more successful, shifty, lousy members of an organization are just good at never being the ones to blame. I heard someone say, you know, never let the boss know your first name. If you're never in sight, um, you're, you are hard, it's harder to pick out and be blamed for some things. And that, that's not a, a great situation to try to uh, aspire to, but there, there, we do always in modern times. We always try to re reward mediocrity, unfortunately. So, anyway, think about this. Maybe something to help somebody out there. And as you're getting going out in the world, um, good to be aware. Self, um, self, or self-aware. Said forewarned is forearmed. Hope this helps somebody. Any questions? Uh, yeah. Oh, we got one. Um, Yeah, you can have an example where someone will say, and that happened all the time, you would have the ground not prosper and they say, oh, the field was put on a uh, sacred ground of an old, you know, whatever haunted place where we should never have built in the first place. Or you could say, they always have to find something to blame because most people don't want to take the responsibility on themselves or they don't want the world to be so scary that there's no landmarks to judge where they're at. You know, the, the sea, you look at the ocean, there's no navigable landmarks. So people always want there to be a reason. I've, I've heard people say, um, oh, this, we, we tried it in this location and it's a bad location. Not, not because of logical business reasons, but because of that, or, oh, it just wasn't there, that was a, that the old idea of, oh, we built, well, there's a haunted, or haunted, there's a scary movie about, you know, we, they put a, a housing addition over an old Indian burial grounds and that came back and did them. So there's always something to blame for flaws, faults, failures. So people do, that's a good point. Um, it doesn't always have to be a human. The reason I stress that it's a human is if you're in a company, and the people, which doesn't happen so much today, but I've, I've seen little nonprofit organizations that were kind of run by, I'll say hippies. And they uh, said, oh, that wasn't, the, we failed because we didn't have our energies right. Or we didn't, we, we tried it on a, on November and the stars were crossed then and the moon wasn't in the house of Aquarius or something. So yeah, people will always try to find something to blame. And it's not always a human being, it could be something else. So finally, 
All right. Anything else? If you have any questions, uh, ask one in the comments. Thanks a lot.